DeFi is a word used to describe the future generation of digital finance services and products based on and enabled by blockchain technology. As previously stated in this series, blockchain technology is the overall innovation underpinning Bitcoin, and Bitcoin is the largest use case of blockchain technology now in use. Blockchain technology has advanced to the point where it now allows for considerably more complex financial use cases and applications. These new use cases are known as dApps or decentralized applications. Check out the previous episodes in this series where basic cryptocurrency terms and concepts were explained to help you better comprehend what will be said in this episode. In today's video, we will be comprehensively talking about DeFi, what DeFi is, how DeFi is different from Bitcoin, how DeFi works, how DeFi differs from traditional banking, regulatory pushbacks, risks, and so on. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to be notified whenever a new video like this is released. What is DeFi? DeFi refers to financial apps based on blockchain technology that allow multiple parties to transact digitally. Decentralized finance, sometimes known as DeFi, is a new digital financial infrastructure that, in theory, eliminates the need for financial transactions to be sanctioned by a central bank or government agency. Many people think of DeFi as a catch-all term for a new wave of financial services innovation. DeFi is intimately tied to blockchain, Bitcoin's decentralization, immutable public ledger, which allows all computers or nodes in a network to preserve a copy of the transaction history. The idea is that no single entity has control over the transaction ledger or has the ability to change it. DeFi might entail lending, sending, or investing in cryptocurrency. DeFi importantly occurs without the intervention of a central authority or banks or other traditional financial institutions, hence the term decentralized. Uniswap and Curve Finance are two of the most popular DeFi programs. The DeFi finance businesses, which was virtually non-existent only a few years ago, has now evolved into a multi-billion dollar industry. The Ethereum network, the second largest cryptocurrency marketplace, also serves as a platform for other blockchain apps. Ethereum's cryptocurrency, Ether, is used to cover transaction charges. Two or more parties can swap, lend, borrow, and trade directly using blockchain technology and smart contracts by using decentralized apps or dApps. This eliminates the need for middlemen and saves money. It's a fair, free, and open digital economy in theory. In practice, at least for the time being, it isn't always the case. Continue watching to learn more about this new digital financial marketplace. How is DeFi different from Bitcoin? DeFi differs from cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin in that it extends the usage of blockchain beyond simple value transfers to more complicated financial applications. While Bitcoin can only be used as a store of wealth, DeFi, which is driven by decentralized applications or dApps, allows participants to exchange, lend, borrow, and trade directly on the blockchain without the use of intermediaries or incurring fees. Smart contracts, which are computer code that operates as digital agreement between two parties, are at the heart of DeFi. Smart contracts, which run on the blockchain, execute transactions automatically if specific circumstances are met. They can be used for a range of financial protocols, such as issuing crypto-backed loans and paying interest on assets. Because Ethereum's programming languages are specifically designed for generating and deploying flexible smart contracts, most DeFi applications are developed on top of Ethereum, the second largest cryptocurrency platform. They've since spread to other smart contract-based networks like Solana and Avalanche. Anyone having a DeFi-enabled crypto wallet can utilize DeFi items by going to the application's website and connecting with one, such as MetaMask on Ethereum or Phantom on Solana. How does DeFi differ from traditional banking? When we compare DeFi to traditional finance, there are several things that stand in stark contrast, the most essential of which is that traditional finance requires you to keep money in the hands of a firm, whereas DeFi allows you to keep money in your own hands. A fund transfer with DeFi can take only a few minutes, regardless of the amount being sent even if millions of dollars are involved. In traditional finance processing, a payment between two banks might take several hours and moving huge sums of money via banks can be extremely complex. Traditional finance means that markets close when staffs need a break, whereas DeFi marketplaces are constantly open. Transaction activity in DeFi is anonymous, however, your financial activity in traditional finance is closely linked to your identity. 
Furthermore, DeFi is available to everybody, unlike traditional finance institutions that need you to fill out an application. It's also worth noting that DeFi is based on transparency, which means that anyone can look up a product's history and statistics, as well as how it works. Only the bank and the tax administration have access to loan history and asset management in traditional financial institutions, which is inaccessible to the public. Regulatory pushbacks. Currently, there's almost no regulation. However, this may change shortly. Chairman Gary Gensler of the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC urged for stronger regulation in August 2021, implying that some platforms might be in violation of securities regulations. I think that it will end horribly without protections, Gensler said a few months later. Thailand's Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, has also spoken out in favor of regulation, implying that some DeFi initiatives may need a license to function in the country. The Bank of International Settlements, the BIS, has stepped in as well, warning that DeFi vulnerabilities are beyond those in traditional finance and may even jeopardize global financial stability. What are the risks? Participating in finance's Wild West entails a certain amount of risk. Because the people who facilitate DeFi transactions are often nameless, fraud has become common. Rug pulls in which developers depart projects after sums of money have been invested are a well-known kind of crypto fraud, with DeFi being particularly vulnerable. A badly designed smart contract may contain vulnerabilities that allow scammers to steal, as well as other design defects that impair asset value. DeFi, like many other new decentralized blockchain networks trading cryptocurrency, is extremely hazardous, especially since it's a new technology aimed at disrupting an established institution like a centralized bank. It's even riskier for newcomers who are enticed by the promise of passive income and yield farming because there are potentially other concerns. Ethereum offers security and scam avoidance measures. According to Chain Analysis, a blockchain data platform, $14 billion in cryptocurrency was routed to unlawful addresses in 2021, roughly double the amount sent in 2020. Because most DeFi services aren't insured, if a platform fails or is hacked, millions of dollars could be at risk. By 2021, DeFi investors had lost at least $1.5 billion due to security issues. According to Chain Analysis, the most important thing to remember is to avoid using new tokens that haven't been code audited. Code audits are a process in which a third party firm examines the code of a smart contract that underpins a new token or other DeFi project and publicly certifies that the contract's governance rules are unbreakable and contains no mechanisms that could allow developers to steal funds from investors. Before we wrap up today's episode, remember. DeFi is a broad term that refers to any transaction that takes place on the blockchain. You can perform most of the things you can do with a bank with DeFi, such as borrow, lend, earn interest, trade assets and derivatives and so on. DeFi is different because it is global, peer-to-peer, -peer, anonymous, doesn't employ a centralized infrastructure and is open to everyone. Meanwhile, the chances of a bank freezing or embargoing your account for various reasons are substantially higher. So do you think DeFi is a suitable replacement for traditional banking or what do you feel about DeFi as a whole? Let us know what you think in the comments area. And that's it for today's episode of Cryptocurrency Explained. There's a chance you still have inquiries. If that's the case, just type them out in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so you get notified whenever new episodes are available. Thank you for your interest in watching this episode. Goodbye.